exactly two weeks ago today that Hong Kong finally got rid of the mask mandate. And of course, if everybody's keeping track, today is also going to be the last day the kindergartners and the primary school students have to do those rapid antigen tests, all part of the Hong Kong's COVID measures to help keep everybody safe. Uh, Things have been very difficult here. We've had, of course, the strictest quarantines at one point, 21 days. Uh, the Cathay Pacific air crew were running in closed loop management. And at some a couple of months, so they could not fly to nine countries. Their key markets like U.S., Australia and the U.K., all part of uh, COVID restrictions. Now, this is the first time we've been speaking face to face to Cathay Pacific since 2019. We've seen the social unrest as well as the three years of COVID. So it's been a very difficult time and I asked them basically what is the biggest risk that you're preparing for now I got a chance to speak to CEO Ronald Lamb and this is his interview moving forward in terms of our biggest risk I would say is you know we, we built of our capacity whether we're gonna get enough resources in the entire aviation ecosystem I think that's the short-term risk or issue <laughs> that we've been facing and we've been working very hard uh, to address that so that we can rebuild uh, back to our pre-pandemic capacity as soon as possible. Uh, there are other economic risks, but I would say those are more business as usual. I think even before the pandemic, we faced many risks uh, in those regards. So I would not say there are new risks uh, to us. One of the risks could be the Ukraine war, which has been now on for more than a year. And it's meant that North American airlines, European airlines have had to avoid the Russian airspace. But Cathay Pacific resumed using the polar route in the fourth quarter of last year to get to the East Coast destinations over in North America. What is the economic and geopolitical risks to deal with this? And are Asian carriers at an advantage compared to their Western counterparts because they can't use the Russian airspace? Well, as a premium airline, Cafe Pacific, we are very customer centric and we just focus on how we can do our best to serve our customers. And therefore, uh, as you mentioned, we have uh, resumed uh, flying over Russia for our uh, East Coast US flights. And that has saved uh, the avoided tax stop. Otherwise, that will be necessary for uh, our customers traveling between Hong Kong to the East Coast of the US. So if we have to do tech stop, we could not carry as many customers and we could not carry as much cargo. So, and the flying time will be much longer. So we have taken a very customer-centric approach to have make that decision to serve the best interest for uh, our customers. Would you say that Asian airlines are at an advantage compared to their Western peers? Well, I think all the airlines can make um, their own choices. And I think we, as I mentioned, I think looking after the customer's interest of ours is our number one priority. And I wouldn't comment on other airlines' uh, policies on this. And one last question about ticket fares, ticket prices. They still remain very elevated. At what point do you think that uh, it could normalize? Well, I think the ticket price we are seeing at the moment is a result of supply and demand. And we are making every effort to try to normalize the ticket fares in Hong Kong and in other markets. And the way we do it is to provide more supply. So we've been working really, really hard on adding more flights. And in some popular routes already, I think we have been adding more and more flights, flights to London, to Japan, to Singapore, to Chinese mainland. It's all resuming very quickly. And according to the trend we've seen, the ticket price in those routes has been coming down. So as we add more flights towards the end of the year, I hope the ticket fare will become uh, more normalized. And of course, a lot of this hinges on uh, being able to recruit staff, and the airline is uh, looking to hire 3,000 staff this year. Uh, capacity currently standing at about 50%. By the end of this year, they look to get that number to 70% and resuming full capacity by the end of next year. Uh, they also hope to be profitable this year, but a lot of that will depend on uh, the capacity that they're running at, uh, basically how full their flights are as well, and the yield that they're getting from each of their flights. So lots that we covered in the Cathay Pacific interview. We also talked about the government bailout and the preferred share dividends. Uh, we also talked about that free tickets giveaway. Uh, so lots more is coming up on a CNBC here and my interview with Ronald Lamb, CEO of Cathay Pacific Group.